time. Get this thing about ready to roll. All right, we are live. Hope everybody can hear me. I am Keith Niebuhr. That is Corey Bender. We're both with Gators Online. We're going to talk some Florida Gators football recruiting today. Florida's got a big weekend. You got the, the Jersey blackout game on Military Appreciation Day at the Swamp against Arkansas. Uh, they're sitting there at five and three. They could use a win to become bowl eligible. And you want to look good in front of all these recruits that are coming this weekend. Uh, uh, Corey, first of all, how's it going, man? Good, man. How about you, Keith? Everything going good? Everything's good. Everything's good. Ready to get rolling. So we're going to talk about some of the big visits. Sure. Uh, start. Yeah, obviously, Jeremiah Smith, the number one recruit in the country, is going to be in town again Saturday. Uh, they've got some flip candidates coming to town. They've got an official visitor, and then we're going to make sure we take your questions as well. But let's start with uh, let's start with the big guy, the big guy, Jeremiah Smith, number one receiver in the country, number one recruit in the country, longtime Ohio State commitment. This will be his second game at the Swamp this season. He also was at Florida twice in June, once for an official visit, once for a seven-on-seven -seven camp, then returned in late July. So this will be his fifth visit to Florida just since June, Corey. And, you know, we always say follow the visits. You know, he's been to other places, but I don't think he's been to any of the other schools outside of Ohio State as many times as he's been to Florida. Is, mm -hmm. is that significant at all? To a degree, but I think overall, regardless of the school, Keith, I think it's going to be very difficult to flip him. I mean, the relationships are strong in Gainesville. Obviously, the presence of DJ Lagway, that's another factor, too, having a future five-star quarterback who could be in your class. But I think when it's all said and done, I think it's a business approach by him and his family. They're taking their visits. Um, obviously, they, they play in uh, St. Petersburg this evening, so it's not too far from Gainesville. So a two-hour drive, head up to Gainesville after that game. But, yeah, I think significant. I think it's definitely worth noting, but it's definitely – you don't put him on flip watch or anything like that. It's going to be hard to change his mind. Yeah, the, the trip really the, – the game Friday night in St. Petersburg made this possible. His team, yep. Hollywood, Shamana, Madonna, which is yeah, obviously in South Florida, they're playing St. Pete Lakewood. <laughs> uh, this evening. And so they're, they're just like, Hey, we're just going to shoot over to Gainesville afterwards. We're working to get some more details on this visit. I don't know if he's going to stay into Sunday. Last time he arrived Saturday afternoon, went to the Florida Charlotte game, had a good time, mm -hmm. although he doesn't show any expression on his face at all. There were a ton of photos on Twitter of him just looking kind of sad, but that's, that's how he looks. He's not a guy that's smiling and laughing all the time. He's focused. He's, you know, he's, that's just how he is. And, uh, so we don't know. Again, last time he did stay the night. This time we don't know. We know he'll stay tonight, obviously, but we don't know if he'll stay through through Sunday. Uh, but it, it look, it's good for Florida to have him on campus. Anytime you have the number one recruit on campus, it's great for perception too. Hey, yeah. that look what the staff is doing. They continue to get this guy back. Look at what Florida Florida's NIL is doing. I mean, he wouldn't be visiting Florida if if they weren't look thinking that Florida's NIL situation is in a good yeah. place. Um, now, the only downside, I don't want to say downside, but DJ Lagway, Florida's five-star quarterback committee, won't be there. That's the downside of having or the, the, the unfortunate part of having a noon game. Well, when you have guys committed that live in Texas, it's hard for them to get there. He's losing an hour. He'd have to leave first thing in the morning. I mean, it'd be tricky. There's no non-stops. He could fly from Houston to Jacksonville, then drive, or he could fly from Houston to Atlanta and then Atlanta again. You know, it's a lot of work, and he's been to a bunch of games. But Again, this will be Jeremiah Smith's second game at Florida this year, and DJ Lagway will have been at neither one. That's okay. Yeah. They talk a lot, but it'd be nice if they were together on campus. Yeah. You'd like that. But if, in a perfect world, they'd be there together. It's not the end of the world if, they, if not. Now, here's where it could be significant. Uh, you know, his plan all along, Jeremiah Smith's, has been to come back for the Florida Florida State game. Does this change that? That's one thing we don't know. If he yeah. still comes back, that'd be three games in the same season. I mean, he certainly is feeling comfortable in Gainesville and probably feeling a little bit more comfortable every time he visits. Uh, I'd put a flip at you know, 20%. And I, look, that gives you a fighting chance. You got a puncher's yeah. chance, Corey. Uh, it, obviously, it's not going to be easy. Ohio State, you know, college football playoff bound as of today. They still got some tough games to play. We know what they've done with receivers. You can't question what they've done with receivers. Uh, could their offensive coordinator, Brian Hartline, who's also the receivers guru up there, could he be in line for a head coaching job? There's unknowns, obviously, uh, and, and that'll all sort itself out. But Jeremiah Smith plans to take his recruitment all the way to December signing day. Now, knowing him, you never know. He could put out a tweet two weeks before signing day and say, I'm done. He could put out a tweet a couple weeks before signing day and said, I've just flipped to this school and I'm done. We, we don't know. Uh, but hopefully for Florida, this won't be the last time he's on campus. 
We know that, like I said, <clears throat> his father has told us they probably will be back for the Florida-Florida State game. And then also, don't forget, Florida will have, I think, three in-home visits yeah. with Jeremiah Smith in December. And on one of those visits, head coach Billy Napier will be able to go. So a lot to be done in this recruitment. All right, Corey, next up, they do have an official visitor this weekend, and you had yeah. some great scoop this week. Uh, I, I pronounce it Favor Edwin, offensive tackle from Eagles Landing Christian, McDonough, Georgia, just south of Atlanta, right off the interstate, private school. They put guys, they sent Isaac Rochelle to Notre Dame. They mm -hmm. sent Andrew Williams to Auburn. It's a very respectable program. What is the latest with Favor Edwin? Because, Corey, Florida doesn't like to host in-season officials. So, you know, what changed and, and what does Florida think of this guy? Yeah, I, I think it's a few things, Keith. I think, obviously, they've seen as the season has went along that the offensive line is a priority. They already have about four kids in the class now, but they still need to continue to beef it up. And, you know, and Jordan Seaton, too, they're heavily in the mix for him, the number one ranked prospect at, at that position. But nothing's a gimme there. I would say Florida's obviously probably in the top five range, but nothing's guaranteed. So Florida's kind of shifted their gear a little bit. And instead of waiting until after the season where some of these guys could be at, off the market by then, they're starting to kind of give in a little bit with certain guys at party positions, with Favor Edmund being one of them. Um, last night, you put out a top five. No surprises there. Alabama, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Florida, and Auburn. I would probably say Florida and Auburn are positioned the best right now, especially the Tigers. You know, they just got them on campus as well. And, uh, yeah, they knocked out of the park. But Florida's been involved, you know, much longer than they have. So I think the interesting part is with Florida is, you know, they kind of cooled down, then they circled back. The relationships are in place, and from what I was told by a few sources, is that he's definitely a take by Florida. So if he wanted in this weekend, Florida would take him. That wouldn't change anything with Jordan Seaton either, obviously. Um, yeah. But yeah, he's a guy they like. They love his ceiling. He's six foot eight, and one of those guys that gets off the bus and grabs your attention physically. Yeah, I don't think he's a legit six eight. Though. I have to I say, everyone says six eight. When I saw him, I think it was yeah. Tennessee game. I would say probably six six and a half. Yeah. He's tiny. He's only 6'6". Six, six. I just yeah. saw a photo of him with Auburn's quarterback commit, who's about 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, maybe maybe not, the cleats. Maybe the cleats closer. But yeah, I don't yeah there's not here. that much difference. But but look, uh, Jordan Seaton's not that tall. You know, you're seeing a lot of Pro Bowl tackles in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, all pro tackles. I'm sorry. Pro Bowl. Pro Bowl's great. All pro is the level above. Some of these guys are 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I mean, if you can play and you've got the skinny ankles, and yes, that matters, and uh, you've got the reach and you're just smart. I mean, you're going to be fine. Uh, that's what they're really looking for. And and obviously, for Vore Edwin's stock is rising. Uh, yeah. Now, Clemson did Clemson did just take, a, I believe, an offensive tackle commit this week. I'm not sure how that impacts yeah. how that impacts that. But, you know, uh, his uh, his ties to Auburn are this. One of his former teammates from last season, I think Carlton Hood is his name, signed with Auburn. And um, so he they're very good friends. And you know, Auburn's got a big need just like Florida does. And, you know, a while ago, we didn't know if he was a take. Well, he's been a take there since they offered him. So uh, he's just got a lot of sorting out to do. The timing of this official visit, like I said, is interesting because um, uh, did Billy Napier just tweet a, uh, that might be for the preferred walk. No, that's, the, that's for the preferred walk on. Yeah. Okay. Let me, yeah. let me point this out. Gator Swag says Billy Napier just tweeted his commitment emoji. Uh, Florida did land a preferred walk on this morning, Corey. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and obviously it, look, it's a guy. This is what you want to do. His name's Mark Faircloth and he's an offensive lineman from Tallahassee. He's visited, uh, Florida bunch, good looking yeah. frame, uh, good looking kid, looks tough. His yeah. program up in Tallahassee historically has put guys in major college programs. And he turned down group of five offers. And, you know, when you look at the transfer portal every year, core, you're seeing Florida and other schools go after a group of five offensive and defensive linemen. Been starting for them, yeah. Those guys develop. I mean, they, they don't take anything for granted. They get in, they work hard, they put their nose to the ground, and they work their asses off, and they get developed and develop themselves. And sometimes those guys end up being a lot better than the guys that sign with the, you know, with the Ohio States and Michigans and, and, yeah. and Florida's of the world. So, you know, you don't ever discount PWOs uh, because you just, in this day and age, this could be their opening. This is, this is interesting now. So a guy that Florida thought pretty highly of, uh, and, and, you know, maybe in another year, if they had, could take more developmental offensive linemen on scholarship, yeah. he might've been a guy that, that they would have taken. But uh, so congratulations to, to him. And, and again, you know, they've got to get better on the offensive line. They're working on Favor Edmund, which is what got us to this, but a guy like Mark Faircloth, again, turning down group of five offers and that's, that's big for Florida. So you, you can almost say Mark Faircloth. I know it sounds crazy. Yeah. But Favor Edmund's brand new to the game measurables through the roof. 
when you look at pure football, just X's and O's, Mark Faircloth is a good player on film, like you said. And I think the other thing too, Keith, is like his want to be in Florida. I think that means something. I mean, he had full rides, like you said, at UAB and some other schools. But the fact that he's turned that down and says, hey, I want to kind of pull all my chips on the table. I want to compete with the best. I think sometimes that's when you get the best out of these guys. And maybe two, three years from now, you'll see this kid as a redshirt sophomore. In yeah, the you never know. Yeah, he used to kind of poo poo on, on walk ons. Like, yeah, this guy's not going to have a chance. But again, in this day and age, yeah. not only are they developing at group of five schools, guys with his level right now, or, or but also don't forget Florida, the schools like Florida, they lose guys. And yeah. so openings that you know, you lose guys, you're cutting the fat, or guys transfer, or they get hurt, or they yeah. whatever. So you're constantly bringing guys in and losing guys. And someone like this who wants to be at Florida. Uh, you know, he might be a guy that's playing down the road. We'll see. So, but, but Favor Edwin, it, it feels like you're right. It feels like Florida, Auburn, and then, and then Clemson. I think probably Auburn feels pretty good about where things yeah. sit right now, but he didn't commit when he was there. He's riding it out. He wants to see what the, uh, the best situation is and, and yeah. we'll see. So Florida's turn to kind of impress him this weekend. Now, Corey, one big flip target that's going to be on campus, Jaden Baugh. Yeah, uh, running back from Decatur, Georgia. That's right inside the perimeter, southeast Atlanta, uh, Columbia High School. Again, another school that's produced a lot of Power Five players through the years. And uh, you know, he committed to Arkansas uh, several months ago. Visited Florida earlier this year. They'd already offered him, but then they officially offered him the first week of August, which was an eye opener because it told us, hey, they're still after this guy. And in subsequent conversations with Jaden Baugh, he's let us know, yeah, we were talking a lot. They're they're after me heavy, and then. He called me last week or texted me last week, said, hey, or a couple weeks ago. Actually, we've known for a few weeks, but, hey, I'm going to be in Gainesville for the for the Arkansas game. So he's going to get to see the school he's committed to, Arkansas, versus the school that's pushing the hardest for him, and that's Florida. He's averaging, Corey, almost 14 yards a carry, but he also plays safety, and he's oh, listed as a linebacker. So, like, yeah. he is an athlete, man. I mean, Florida wants him solely at running back. He's 6'1", 215. So for the people out there that are tired all these – Backs under six foot, under 200 pounds. Hey, 6'1", 6'1 and a half, 215 pounds. We're going to find out this weekend. I haven't seen him in person if those numbers are legit. But he's a big back. He said, Keith, I can do it all. I'm not just some power back. Uh, I should point out he's got almost 400 receiving yards. So he's a really interesting player. He's only a high three-star. He's just under the radar. But we'll again, under-recruited probably a little bit. Yeah, under-recruited, under the radar. 13 to 14 yards a carry. 400 receiving yards. Could play linebacker, but is so athletic his team plays him at safety because that's where the need is. Those are a lot of positives. <laughs> those are those are green lights flashing to me all over the place. Um, so Florida's running back board, Corey, they've got one guy committed, Kane and Daniels out of Mississippi. Yeah, obviously some schools are going to continue to recruit him. I expect Mississippi State's going to be all over him yeah. until signing day because he's only 20 minutes away. Yeah. Um, but they want to add a second back. The Gators want to add a second back. So who are they looking at? Still kind of sniffing around with Chauncey Bowen, the Georgia commit. Uh, working on Jared Gibson, the Texas commit, who was committed to Florida at one time, and as Chauncey Bowens was. Uh, and then also, let's see, are those the three guys? Uh, a Kiwan Lacey, who just decommitted from yeah. Nebraska. Going to Alabama this weekend, I believe. Going to Alabama this weekend. Uh, the info on him seems to change daily. A lot of people thought Ole Miss was the team to beat with Florida next, but he's going to Bama. They may be making a push. But out of all the guys, Corey – and I'm doing all the talking, so forgive me. But doesn't it seem like Baugh is really the one to watch right now? Yeah, Keith, absolutely. I think with Jaden Baugh, too, it's going to be interesting. I think, obviously, the way Arkansas's season's playing out, you know, Sam Pittman's kind of on the hot seat. There's been kind of rumors about his job safety. So you kind of mix that up. And then, you know, Florida, obviously, they utilize the running backs almost better than anyone in the SEC, I would say. Um, so I, I think, overall, you look at Florida, they check a lot of boxes for him. And I think, overall, I just – it, it, to me, I'm not going to say it almost looks like a layup for Florida, but this is the key factor, I think, Keith, is I think if his recruitment is under the radar, I think this guy could have so many more offers. If he flips to Florida, I think, you know, it'll just kind of continue as it goes. But if he decommits, I wonder how many offers start pouring in and what other schools are looking for a back late in the cycle, if that maybe stalls his recruitment a little bit, which could affect Florida. But I think as of today, if you're Florida, you have to be feeling pretty good just based off you know a number of reasons. Uh, of course, the caveat to that is if you're Florida, you certainly don't want to lose to Arkansas this week in the school. Yeah, exactly. That would be yeah. just a – like that, that would be a disaster a loss with those on, many, on many levels. I mean – you know, you're trying to show progress. You're five and three. You just got the kind of, quite frankly, got the doors blown off you in Jacksonville yeah. by, by an experienced Georgia team. Yeah. Uh, 
but you want to put on a good showing this week. And Arkansas is two and six, and we're the recruiting guys. We're not the team guys, but two and six. But boy, a lot of close losses, Corey. They've lost to three top twelve teams. Yeah. The, the aggregate, the combined total of the losses is only like thirteen points. Yeah. And all three of those games were on the road. This is a dangerous, dangerous team. So Florida's got to go out and play well. And perhaps it is good that it, it there there is a lot of attention on this game. That there is the blackout. And that people are talking about Arkansas being way better than its record because, yeah. you know, if you're, you're hoping that that means Florida's not going to take them lightly and is going to be focused throughout the week. Forget about focus on Saturday. If you're only focused on Saturday, it's too late. You got to be focused throughout the whole week. Uh, so hopefully Florida uh, puts on a good show, impresses these guys because a guy like Jaden Bond, you know, you feel like it, Florida's moving way up and he's thinking about things. And but if Arkansas beats them, it's like wow. Man, the Arkansas just fired its OC. Yeah. It, it seems like they're sort of in, I don't want to say disarray, but not looking good. And they just came into the swamp and beat this team that's selling me on the progress and this this super bright future. Oh, God, Corey, I don't even want to think about that. Well, Florida, yeah, Florida's yeah. undefeated at home. Arkansas's winless in the yeah. SEC. It kind of looks like one of those trap games. If you come out lax of days ago. Oh, my. Yeah. Ooh, Lord. Yeah. Noon game. I mean, it, it all sets up, but that's it, it all sets up for the possibility of, you know, you're, Gosh, a, a trap game. But again, it's getting a lot of attention. And I think that's going to get the Florida players' yeah. attention. Look, it's already going to have the coaches' attention. Coaches are focused every game. Don't worry about that, guys. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're playing Charlotte or not. I think they'll be ready. I think yeah, I, I think so too. We'll we'll see. Um, Corey, any other visitors this weekend that kind of jump out at you? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll start with two of them, Keith. Jameer yep. Grimsley, the Alabama cornerback Ooh, commit. Yeah, yeah he, he's one, I think. I think this visit is going to be the most important of them all. Obviously, he loved Florida as a kid. Um, and let me say first, he is solid with Alabama, but, you know, he definitely has, you know, the childhood phantom for Florida. You know, it's not too far from his house in Tampa, but he hasn't been to a game inside the swamp, and I think that's key. You know, he was in Jacksonville for the Florida-Georgia game. The word he kept saying to me was disappointed. So, you know – Obviously, he's solid Alabama, but he does have a special little place in his heart for Florida. You could definitely tell yeah. by that when speaking with them. But I would say when he gets here, he said this visit is going to determine if he comes back for an OV on yeah. December 8th. So with Florida, I mean, I think hopefully that atmosphere grasps his attention. I know if you're Florida staff, he, they're hoping he walks in the swamp and he's blown away. But, you know, keep going. You're no, I would say one thing. You say he's solid. We we need to point out, Corey. I don't mean to interrupt. He says he's solid. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, behind the scenes for sure. Do you feel yeah. like Corey? If if there's, it seems like there's only one team that could even have a chance of flipping yeah. him. Is that and it would be Florida? Does that sound yeah. about right? Yeah, it'd be Florida. The only other school he mentioned to me, Keith, early this week was Florida State about a potential visit, but that was kind of just you know maybe up in the air down the line. But definitely, and I asked him that same question. I said, hey. Outside of you know Alabama, is Florida really the only school in pursuit of you, or actually really kind of your radar? And he said, "Yeah, pretty much." So this visit's going to go mm -hmm. a long way, man. And we also have in homes, like you said, and he yeah. could take an OV in December. So we'll see. All right, give me one more big guy that's kind of yeah. got your eyes. At Makai Burrow, is it somebody yeah. else? Mikhail, I'll, I'll do Zay Mincy because I think okay, this well, Zay Mincy, four-star cornerback. Yeah, four-star out of Daytona Beach mainland teammates with five-star D lineman LJ McCray. And I think the most important thing is he, I think if the if everything aligned up with his schedule, he would have been in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. That would have probably been his journey as far as what he would have done as far as visits. But you know, with their schedule, that's not going to happen. He's going to be in Gainesville, and I think that's huge because I think right now Alabama and Florida are the schools buzzing the most. I would put Miami, they're still in the mix, but I would probably put them at third right now. But with you know his brother also attends Alabama State, so that's the thing a lot of people don't talk about. So I think Florida kind of getting on campus this weekend is a huge win. But at the same time, it's it's far from over. And uh, man, he's gonna pro probably go back to Tuscaloosa for another visit too. It's interesting. I happen to be reading a, a Miami writers report just I want to say yesterday or the day before on Zay Mincy, and they felt like it was a Miami Alabama battle now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you know that that just shows you there's a little bit of mystery involved with Zay Mincy. He was all, going all to the mainland kids, the, even LJ. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. He was going to tell the school he was going to, like in early September, hey, I'm coming. Let's keep it private and I'll announce it January 6th. But yet, doesn't seem like any of these schools know that he's coming yet. So yeah. it doesn't sound like he's told anybody that he's coming. So there's a lot of mystery involved with Zay Mincy. I mean, I think if you're Florida, Corey, you tell me, mm -hmm. you just need to land Mincy or, um, or Jameer Grimsley. Just one of those two guys. I personally would have. Uh, maybe have Grimsley higher on the board just because of his long-term potential. He's taller. Yeah. He's got more reach. I think he's a little faster. On the other side, though, wait, that Zay Mincy's a gamer, man. Yeah. He's a gamer. But also, here, there's one other thing to consider. 
uh, uh, cornerback commit Wardell Mack of Louisiana, longtime Florida commit. I think he committed to Florida. What it was a June or July. Yeah, yeah. He is yeah July. He is still flirting with other schools. Texas is hot and heavy on him. LSU is not going to give up on him probably. And then FSU is recruiting him extremely hard too. Although we think FSU is probably about to land another cornerback, Jamari Howard. But there's a, always a lot of dynamics in play. Wardell Mack saying all the right things. Hey, I'm locked in with Florida, but. If he visits other schools, it's something you got to watch. But they they really need to hold on to him, and then and then hopefully if, if you're Florida, add a Zay Mincy or a Jameer Grimsley. I mean, you couldn't go wrong with either one of those guys. Quite yeah, if you're if you're a Florida fan, you if you get either one of them, you have to be happy. I mean, this class is already top three. I feel like you look even look at last cycle the DBs. It was a deep class last cycle. If you get one of these guys, you have to be yeah. happy. Hey, Corey, twenty two commitments, number three overall class. Yep. Uh, and people are getting mad at me for not giving this class an A. Because they're, they're just looking at the ranking. And I'm looking at, well, the offensive line group is okay. Yeah. The receiver group is good, not great. Decent, yeah. The defensive line group, oh, everybody says, well, you just got LJ McCray. But they've told LJ McCray he's maybe more of an edge. So that leaves one true defensive lineman, Nasir Johnson, yeah. who there is some confidence at Georgia that they may have a shot to flip him. He's going to officially visit Georgia in a couple weeks. He's in Colorado this weekend. So I don't, oh yeah, he's all oh, over the Lord. place. So I don't know Lord. how, so I don't know how you can give them an A on the defensive line. Secondary, you really need one more elite guy, linebacker and yeah. edge A all the way quarterback A all the way running back. Yeah. How do you give it an A if you want a second back and you only have one back mid? So, They've still got work to do. To me, it's a it's a B plus, maybe even a B, but that's still really good. There's still yeah, that's good. There's still yeah. seven weeks to go. I'm not saying it's not gonna be an A. I'm saying when you look at the needs, you know that's where that would you give it an A right now, Corey? This is a chance for you to really suck up to the fans. So no, yeah, no I lay it on the line, man. I would actually probably give them a B, Keith. Honestly, like right between a B and a B plus, and I which say is that, good. That's good. Yeah, and I say that too, just because I think, like you said, offensive line. I feel like they need that big fish. Uh, along the line, who would be Jordan Seaton and and you know Fletcher, you know Fletcher Westfall, he's a big time kid who I think will be a starter eventually in Florida. Um, some other guys too, but more on the developmental side. So I think they need a big fish, and like you said, Keith, along the D line, a lot of talent, a lot of versatility, but it's kind of unclear how they're going to utilize them. Florida is known for moving guys around, but a lot of these kids who are ranked as D linemen, like you said, are projected to play edge for Florida, which is yeah. not a bad problem to have, but as far as pure D lineman, they lack that. Yeah, so if you're looking at the commitment list, you're saying, oh, wait a second, it says Amaris Williams is a D lineman. Why aren't yeah. you mentioning him? Well, because they've recruited him to play edge. Now, yeah. you know, if you've seen him, he's he probably is an edge type linebacker, type, big linebacker edge type, because yeah. I don't know that he's an inside guy because he's 6'2", 270. That's not very big these days. So yeah. th these are very good players, by the way. Yeah. Amaris Williams is having a hell of a season. That's why Ohio State is all over him. And I should point out that will be my one big visit, one additional big visit for the weekend. Yeah. Merrick Williams. All right. Yes, You've yeah. got Ohio State coming on him strong. He's going to visit there again this month. You've got Tennessee is going to host him on an official visit November 18th. Ohio State just had him on campus for an official. Uh, he's been to Florida for one game this year and he's coming to a noon game. He lives near Wilmington, North Carolina, and he's somehow going to make it to a noon game, which means that that dude's going to be leaving first thing in the morning. Probably flying Delta to Atlanta, as everybody knows, and then that that one of those Atlanta flights down to Gainesville. And he's, he's on the Keith Niebuhr plan, the red eye, the red eye flight plan. Yeah, yeah, he's he's going to be that. That's commitment, you know. Now people say, oh, he's coming on his own dime. Well, yeah, well, I, I don't know how that works these days. I mean, you know, come on, I don't know how many on their own dime trips are, but but look, it's significant. It means a lot. He's one of those guys, Corey. We talk about the sugar high of the visit wherever yeah. he visits. That next couple of weeks, that's all he's talking about. People forget at one time he was like a strong Penn State lean off of a Penn State visit. They thought they were getting him. Then he visits Florida. He commits to Florida on the official visit. Now he's visited Ohio State recently. They're fresh on his mind. So it's important for Florida to get him back on campus. Probably the last time he makes it there before signing day in December. And he's got two other visits coming. But so out of sight, out of mind a little bit. But then Florida has those in-home visits in December. Yeah to be in front of him again. So th that is a hugely important visit. Hey, Corey, let's get to some questions. Lucas, yeah. but Lucas is ready to roll. This dude is our most committed uh, poster. One, one of them. I, I'm not going to say you're number one, Lucas. I can't give you that honor yet. You, you got to earn that. But Lucas wants to know timeline on next 2024 commitment minus the walk on Florida just got, what do you think, Corey? Uh, sometime in the next seven weeks, we know that because <laughs> signing day. 
I mean, J- Jaden Baugh is one to keep an eye on. And I say it because he kind of just—he doesn't say too much. And lately, I know you guys have been talking. He's been great as far as giving us the details. But I could see, obviously, that visit. I mean, he might know Jared Gibson's a guy they're recruiting. Hey, I want—I want to secure my spot. So he's a kid I'm monitoring, especially if Florida wins this weekend. So he's the first guy that comes to mind for me. Okay, I, I would agree. We're going to roll through a lot of these. Uh, Justin says they yeah, need to get Jordan Seaton back for FSU. Couldn't agree more. That's the five-star yeah. offensive tackle. Somebody asked me on the message board the other day, how do you feel about – how should Florida feel about Seton or something like that? I'm like, I, I don't know. Or no, they said, does Florida feel good? I go, I don't think so. It doesn't mean that they feel bad. It's just I don't know that anybody feels good for Jordan Seton. He, Colorado, multiple visits. He's going to Ohio State. He's been to Tennessee and is supposedly going back. Uh, he officially visited Oregon. Alabama in the summer. Yeah, Oregon. I mean, he is – Oregon, that's right. That's a big one because apparently their NIL game is real strong right now. And we've been told this is a big NIL type recruitment. And why wouldn't yeah. it be? He's the number one offensive tackle in the country. I mean, get what you can, right? I mean, you, there's no guarantees you're going to make it to the pros. Exactly. Uh, so no confidence there at all, I would say. Other than the fact Florida is strongly in it. They're strong in it. He's, he's loved his time in Gainesville. He really likes the coaching staff. He really likes DJ Lagway, the, the Gators QB commit. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, Corey, who's the next player to commit? You think it'll be a 2024, 2025? Is it a guy like Baugh? I think right now, I mean, Baugh's like I am focusing on. Yeah, I mean, right. 25, they're, they're in a good position, a lot of kids, but I feel like it's going to be a few months before that 25 shakes out a little bit. I don't. When you look at the visitors list for this weekend, a lot of guys are high in Florida, but I don't believe we're ready to pull the trigger quite. Yeah. Uh, uh, Greedy says, any updates on the number two running back end? Well, this is what we're talking about. Jaden Ball is really, to us, the guy to keep an eye when I talked to him on the phone the other day, Corey, he was kind of like, he was feeling it, man. He was like, yeah. you know, I've got, I, I'm just trying to figure out what's best for me. This is an important visit. He mm-hmm. said that his parents, uh, he's coming down, by the way, noon game. He's playing in Atlanta tonight. He's leaving at like two, three in the morning to get down to Gainesville. Uh, his last visit to Gainesville, he didn't get to see a whole, a ton. This mm-hmm. visit, he's going to get to see a lot. His parents are already going to be down in Florida for some family event. They're going to join him at UF on Saturday. Big, big visit. All right, Justin says, not saying he's on flip watch. I'm assuming he's talking about Jeremiah Smith, the number one uh, recruit in the country. But you can't say him coming back is nothing. His family's already heard the pitch. They continue to come back. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. All right. Um, all right, this one's for you, Corey. I'm going to give you the hard one here. Gary Barker wants to know, what percentage uh, does Florida have of flipping Texas running back commit Jared Gibson, Gainesville native, one-time Florida commit, but seems locked in with with uh, Texas right now. Corey, how? What are the? I would say twenty five percent. I know some people look at that. I just I, he might have fish. He might go to the game tomorrow, and he might take an OV December eighth. I like you said, Keith. He's locked in with Texas. I think it would have to take a whole lot. The yeah. only thing I can see maybe changing is him, like kind of like Kamari Wilson, take an OV right before signing day. Maybe the nostalgia hits in. All your Gainesville family members are there. That's the only way I could really see it. He has mentioned yeah. how he loves how Florida utilizes the backs, but it's going to take a whole lot. He is really high on uh, Tashard Choice, the running yeah. backs coach at Texas, who played at Georgia Tech, understands the lay of the land in the southeast. He's not some Texas coach that's from out west or from Texas. Yeah. You know, he, he understands yeah. uh, what it takes here. Uh, Gator Swag says, uh, Mincy possibly taking an official visit to Florida this week. Yes, we mentioned that. That's correct. And let's see. Winston doesn't like my choice of words. What I'm saying, Winston, is that people historically have said, "Oh, well, this guy's a walk-on. Big deal." I don't think he's. I don't think you can say that anymore. I think Florida's developing a pretty good stable of running backs. I, I'll give you an example: the Rubio kid, the running back uh, from Miami last year. He had group of five offers. Mm-hmm. Guy develops. Guy works hard. Starts on special teams. Moves his way. You just never know. Yeah. You never know. You Those never are the hard know. Workers that will always yeah. put it on the line. Now, historically, Florida's got a great track record, Corey, with walk-ons. It's before your time. Uh, Lewis Oliver was a walk-on. I don't know mm-hmm. how. He looked like Mr. Universe as a bodybuilder. Uh, was, he was a walk-on, and by the time he left, he was a two-time All-American safety. Yeah. Okay. Started for the Miami Dolphins for many years. Kerwin Bell was a walk-on. Four-year starter at quarterback. Four-year starter at quarterback as a walk-on. The great Chris Doring, uh, yeah. good friend, a uh, guy I've known for years. Walk-on. I mean, there's been many. But I'm just talking about perception. Anyway, uh, let's see here. 
I'll never forget seeing Georgia commit Chauncey Bowen sitting there at the baseball field at, at Palm Beach Benjamin and Kirby landing his helicopter. And I thought he gone. Well, you were right. You were right. But look, I mean, you know, Georgia signed three running backs, Harrison, or, or, or going to. Sorry, sorry. They have three running backs committed in this class. And only one of them is going to carry the ball. OK. And so it's uh, that's interesting. That's interesting. I had heard that maybe there was an opening a few weeks ago for other schools. We'll see. I, I think I believe Florida and Miami never stopped recruiting him. All right. Elliot says it all sets up well for Arkansas this weekend. The Gators need to be ready. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Nathaniel says no playmakers on defense. Come I don't know. Nathaniel. Yeah. I don't know if you're talking about the Gator team currently, which I guess you could, <laughs> they need to have some playmakers emerge, but some in the recruiting, okay. But in the recruiting class, no, 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 man. I'm, I'm telling you, man, uh, LJ McCray, Aaron Childs, Jamonte Waller, uh, Amaris Williams, uh, Teddy Foss. They got a lot of playmakers. It's a very good defensive class. I just don't know overall if it's an A. All right. Uh, Greedy says, with all the new offers out there, uh, these late DB recruits, does that mean the staff doesn't have faith in getting Grimsley, Mincy, or Howard? Uh, well, I will say this. Grimsley, Mincy, and Howard are all cornerbacks, Greedy. And the, 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 the safety offer that just went out a few weeks ago to Gregory Smith, he's, he's yeah. a uh, – like I said, he's a safety all the way. So different positions. Yeah. You know, you get to a point, they've got certain guys they got to have. And then other guys, it's kind of like best guy on the board. Best guy on the board. They get, again, 22 commitments. You're not going to probably take but five or six more. They don't then and save the rest of the spots yeah. uh, for, you know, for the portal. What do you think? Gordon? In the numbers work, a lot of people always ask, hey, what's the number they're looking at? I think now with recruiting at NIL and attrition, it's like you don't even really look at numbers as much as you used to in previous cycles. It's so fluid. All right, gee, this is a ridiculous comment. So he says, Florida doesn't have any real flip chance with most of the players that visit Gainesville, according to Keith. But if any Florida recruits visit anywhere else, Keith puts them on flip alert. Oh, man. I don't, we're, I don't know. I mean, people just invent things, okay? That's gee, you're, gee, you're going to get the ban button here, the ban hammer, as they say. But no. So we just spent 10 minutes talking about Jaden Ball, who, again, I broke the story that he was visiting. Uh, we've said that they've got a real good chance with him. I think – if he wants in, I don't know how you say no to the guy, quite frankly. I mean, his film's very, very good. And and I want to, I'm curious to see what the frame looks like up close, but that's not true at all. That's that's actually the opposite of the Gator fans. <laughs> if a guy visits Florida, we're flipping him. If he's visiting somewhere else, I don't worry about it. Yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm in the middle, man. I'm I don't care where I'm impartial. I'm just trying to get you all the info. And Corey, too. If a guy's visiting another school, we're going to tell you. Yeah, Jamonte Waller has visited Auburn twice. That's not my fault that he's been to yeah. two games at Auburn and one at Florida this year. That's I have nothing to do with that. They feel good. We just report the news. And so, well, yeah. Auburn feels good there. But guess what? So does Florida. And by the way, Florida went and saw Waller play just last night. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, don't give you me that. You gee, how me. could you gee, turn it on me, man? Keep. I'm a realist. I'm a realist. All right. Lucas Mann says, do we take both Mensley and Grimsley? I sure would. I would, yeah. I think I think they would too. From what I heard earlier in the cycle, that question I asked someone, and they said, yeah. And I haven't really circled back on it because I think it's kind of one of those obvious ones. But yeah, I would be surprised if they didn't. All right. Uh, next one here. Q Lee says, I don't, I wonder, is this Quan Lee, the former uh, Buholtz and UCF receiver? Uh, we need offensive linemen badly. Well, they got four committed. Two of them are probably projects. The other two, Marcus Mask and Fletcher Westfall look like guys that by year two or three certainly could be in the rotation. It, you know, with offensive line recruiting, Corey, you can't if you have openings needs right now, and that's what you're recruiting in this class. You're too late. You got to yeah. recruit two, three years in advance. Oh, yeah. So Absolutely. the guys they signed last year, Najee Harris, Rod Kearney, you hope that then now they're in the main rotation next year, and by year three are bona fide. SEC high quality starters. Yeah. It takes time to develop those guys. Their bodies are still growing. You got to shed a lot of the baby fat, and put on good muscle, you know, all that stuff. All right. Uh, Gator Swag says, we're going to flip Jeremiah Smith. Uh, we got a question here. You're, the same guy's asking, or same person is asking, who's going to be Florida's OC and LOL coach? I, I don't make any speculation. I, I don't make any predictions on that. Yeah, too season. early. Yeah. All right, uh, Nathaniel says, my nephew's only 13 years old from Orlando, will be a future All-American, already got an offer from UCF and South Florida. Hey, oh, Nathaniel, I'm you got you to give us his name. By the way, if you like what we're doing, hit the, uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment, all that stuff. And right now we've got uh, – I'm trying to find all the things here, the comment. It looks like I can't find the uh, 
the thing that's telling everybody to leave a comment. Oh, here we go. Uh, we've got a deal at Gators Online. It's not even a deal anymore. It's or a, a temporary deal. It's a permanent thing. Anytime you want to give us a shot, $1 for one month, we feel like we've got the best intel and insight in the market. Maybe we don't. Maybe we're kidding ourselves, but we think we do. We try. Uh, we, we feel like we've created a fun environment for people to come and just talk Gators sports, primarily Gators football with, with other Gator fans. And then people like me, I guess that are too negative. Uh, but anyway, we love what we're doing and we love that all of y'all are, are giving us a look. So let's, let's get back to the questions here, Corey. Oh, go ahead, Corey. What are you going to say? No, I said, yeah, but I was agreeing with you. Yep. No, you're okay. good. And, and we're going to go about another 10 minutes. So we appreciate everybody stopping by. Again, Corey and I are trying to get into a rhythm. He's more of a morning person than me, trying to do this 10 a.m. every Friday. Hey, look, if it goes well, maybe we'll add a second show. We don't have anything else going on. Yeah. I mean, you know, Corey was watching Gilligan's Island 35 minutes ago. So, I, I you know, we, we've got the time. All right. Um, okay. Elliot says, How well do you think Billy Napier closes with this class and the kids left on board? You want to go? Uh, right yeah, I, I think well, I think they either get. I think they're going to finish fairly well. I still feel good with Zay Minty. Jameer Grimsley's kind of a a toss up. I would say. I think overall the biggest question right now is who could they lose and who can they hold on to. I think that's where where, where my attention is. Nazir Johnson and Maris Williams. But how about you, Keith? Where are you at as far as? Yeah, I'm I'm concerned about those two guys. I'm probably more concerned about Amaris Amaris Williams, the edge. He's having a great season, by the way. And I know he's going to be in Gainesville this weekend, but I, I just yeah. I just know that wherever he goes, he falls in love with that place all over again. And I, yeah. I think Ohio State's the clear team to watch. Their D-line coach, uh, he's an edge, and they're recruiting him as an edge, but their D-line coach is heavily involved in his recruitment. That's Larry Johnson, who's yeah. probably the best-known defensive line coach in all of college football. Yeah. He's yeah. 70, I think he's 70, 71 years old now, but well-respected, man. The guy just, I mean, yeah, an unbelievable track record. So, Florida coaches, the Florida coaches have their work cut out. Florida staff too. Yeah. Um, so I, I would think Ohio State would be the team to watch there. If you can survive next week's official visit, I think you're probably in, in pretty good shape there. I mean, he loves Florida. Um, gosh, Ohio State's unbeat. I mean, you know, there's a lot. You know, it's it's a tough battle. I mean, everybody's saying that. And by the way, there's some real confidence coming from Ohio State. They're not. They don't bring guys on campus unless they feel like they've got a shot. Yeah. It's that simple. Yeah. So point. to me, that's the guy to watch. And then this year, Johnson. Uh, the four-star defensive lineman, Georgia. He's got that official visit, I think, to Georgia coming up in two weeks. We'll see how that goes. But I think even if Florida was 9-0 and right now, or what, what are they, 5-3, and even if they were 8-0 and right now, people were still going to be coming after their recruits. This is a good problem yeah. to have. They're yeah. recruiting very good players, Corey. Corey, have, has anybody even tried to poach their players the last three, four years, their commits? I mean, not like, were, yeah, not like, like this. Not like this, no. I mean, there, there be when the whole coaching change happened, you would have some guys, but I'm not going to say names, but you could tell the talent level from where yeah. they were committed to to where they landed. It was kind of you could tell they weren't that Florida brand. And, and it's been a good mix of going out and getting the guys that are already big name guys, yeah, and going out and getting guys that they Florida staff identified early, offered, got on, got in good, laid the groundwork early, got those guys, and then they blew up later. And those are good evaluations there. So they, they've done a hell of a job. They really have. But it, it just takes work. You, we say in this business, you got to recruit through the whistle. You got to yeah. recruit all the way to the end. That's just the way it goes, man. And yeah, there's going to be surprises. There's going to be, you're going to wake up and you're like, oh my God, this guy's leaving. But there's also going to be positive surprises, positive developments. I mean, I think if you go watch Jaden Baugh's film, you're probably going to have a different opinion about him than if you just look at his ranking, quite frankly. Uh, so we'll see. All right. Um, let's next up. Uh, Tawan says we're landing Zay Mincy. He's calling it. He's calling a shot. Now I really think we got a great chance of stealing Jameer Grimsley after this game. It's really on. Uh, I mean, you know, his biggest thing are wins and losses. So, I mean, I, I, my thing with Grimsley too is, is where his expectations may, may have been before the season. I know he thought when I talked to him, he generally thought they were going to beat Georgia. And um, he was obviously highly impressed by the Tennessee win. So uh, it's going to be interesting. If they can just get this one over Arkansas, I think that clinches the OV. And I think after that, I think it all starts kind of trending toward Florida a little bit. But uh, it's a lot, there's a lot to be played out. We'll see. I, I still got this cold. It's I, I look at the, the next show, Corey's on this alone. It probably just means I'm in intensive care somewhere. All right, DeAndre says, when all is said and done, do you think uh, Florida finishes with the top five class? I do. I could mm -hmm. see them losing one or two guys, but they're still in the game with a lot of guys. And a guy like Gregory Smith – the safety that they're recruiting from Tampa, uh, the Tampa area, he's a high three-star. 
who's playing safety for the first year. Once his whole season film is out, he very well could be a four-star. Sometimes these guys end up higher ranked than the guys that you've been recruiting the last two years. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, Let's see. Uh, are we getting those officials? I'm just going through these. Okay, here we go. What is that first name? Julius Nivelle? Peppers. No, 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 no not oh, the name. No. Yes, Navelle. Okay, my eyes are, aren't good. Hey, don't let the next Julius Peppers, that being Amaris Williams, and the next Vaughn Miller, who's Jamonte Waller, leave the Gators class. Again, I think they feel a lot better at Florida about Waller than they do about Williams. And I'm not saying they feel bad about Williams. Look, I had two sources this week, Corey, tell me. One of them said with Amaris, it's Florida and Ohio State neck and neck. And somebody very close to the recruitment, I mean, as close as you can get, said it's probably still 70-30 Florida going into this weekend's visit to Florida. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's, if you're Florida, you know, put the finishing touches on this. Hey, maybe you can convince him not to take any more trips. I don't know. But, look, it's going to be a battle till the end. At the end of the day, he's going to have to go where, where his heart and his brain tell him to go. But I, I think Florida feels better mm -hmm. about Waller. Would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. And Waller's coming back for the Florida State game, too. And a lot of people, if you go back to his Tennessee game, his comments, I mean, there was a boatload of kids on campus for that game. His comments were probably the most bright as far as glowing about what he said about Florida. So I think with Waller, it's just getting him back to campus and reminding him of why he chose Florida in the first place. All right. And we got, got some more comments here. Nathaniel says, who's the 15 tackles a game guy? I, I, Give me something more than that. No, it's, I think you're probably talking about Adarius Hay, um, uh, Hayes, Adarius Hayes. Oh, right. Adarius Hitman Hayes. Yeah, he's having a really strong season for Largo High down yeah. here in the Tampa St. Peter. Great program, produced the great running back, Dexter McCluster, who I loved, he, uh, even though he was at Ole Miss. And, uh, but, gosh, he was a fun player to watch. Same school. They're just beating the hell out of just about everybody. Uh, Tawan says Mike Williams is underrated. I like uh, that's a, he's a lowest rated member. I think he's the lowest. One of the two lowest rated members of Florida's recruiting class was yep. one time committed to South Carolina offensive tackle from Baltimore. By the way, his team's like eight, eight or nine and one. They beat yeah. the death out of most people too. And he's been a big part of that. Uh, I, it's going to be interesting to see what his film looks like this season, Corey, because he was committed to South Carolina and, and people up there claim that they dropped him. him yeah. Okay. So I don't know. I, I don't, I don't have, I'm not privy to South Carolina's recruiting board. So yeah. that was kind of like, uh, what does that mean? What is Florida seeing in him that other schools aren't seeing in him? So I, I don't know. And Tuan, you may be right. You may be right. I, I just think he's a guy you just have to be patient with. He's aggressive. Yeah. He actually has decent film. My thing is when you see him in person, he, I mean, he has to add a significant amount of weight. So, I mean, but he wants another kid that wants to be at Florida. He's probably going to be patient, so we'll see what he turns into. Well, and, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. He knows yeah. everybody's looking at that ranking, and yeah. yet he didn't care. And by the way, he was one of the best recruiters Florida had this summer, yeah. even though he was the lowest-rated guy committed. He he was invested in Florida. That says a lot about him. He I started think. off. He was that first commit. Yeah. That got everything That's right. In. That's right. Yeah. All right uh, this one's for you, Corey. Okay. Any, you're the 2025 guru. Any update on some 25 recruits? How does the board look? Uh, Corey, why don't you just give us – we can't go over everybody – why don't you just give us two 2025s that were that you're tracking closely right now as big Florida targets and guys think Florida's doing well at 2025 targets? Yeah, I, well, Jalen Wiggins out of Tallahassee. I, I think I'm comfortable saying Florida's a school training there. A top 100 kid, a big-time defensive lineman who loved Florida as a kid. He's kid's been in campus numerous times this year, so definitely keep an eye on him. And another one we could uh, we can also mention is Hilton Stubbs, a safety out of Jacksonville. Um, Florida's the school he's visited more than anyone. You know, obviously those relationships are strong in daily contact with Austin Armstrong. So I would say his recruitment's a little bit more fluid compared to where it was early in the year, but I still think Florida has an advantage right now. Okay. That's a good, that's good. Good info right there. Uh, we're going to get a few more comments and then we'll let everybody get rolling. S Beck says we need top tier offensive linemen as well as developmental guys. And he's absolutely yeah. right. And portal guys. So yeah. I would say there's two things going on at once. There's really three developmental guys, elite guys, <laughs> Portal guys, you got to recruit all of them at once. You got to be able to plug in guys. You got to be able to have difference makers. You got to have developmental guys that may take two or three years, but man, when they're ready, they're going to be ready. Uh, yep. Nathaniel says, What about Charles Lester? That's the five star FSU cornerback commit. We haven't really mentioned him, Corey. Yeah. Uh, Florida loves him, but I just feel like they don't have as good a chance with him as Jameer Grimsley and Zay Mincy. What say you, Mr. Bender? Yeah, so he, he's supposed to come back for the FSU game and then probably take an OV December 8th. But what I've been told, too, with the FSU game, 
I think everyone knows, including Florida, he's fairly solid with the Seminoles. I mean, that commitment is rock solid. I'm just not sure how that's going to play out with him at in Gainesville as a Florida recruit. So I wouldn't really bank on him visiting just yet. But as far as the OV, it's possible he goes for OV. With all that said, though, changing his mind is going to be extremely difficult. Yeah, grew up an FSU fan. Well, yeah. just have to see. Uh, Elliot says Gators online is the Gators standard. Uh, not Dan Mullen's recruiting Gators standard, I hope, but hopefully yeah. <laughs> the, the actual what was supposed to be the Gators standard. Uh, all right, let's see here. Let's go through. We got a lot of comments. Trying to get to a few more here. Uh, Luke, and obviously we're going to put up the ones that compliment us. I got to put up the ones of the guys ripping me. I got to put up the good ones. Too. Oh, look, Nick just ripped on you. Look, Nick just says something about you. Oh, no. Nick. Uh, <laughs> Nick who? They, uh, our, boy, our boy. All right, let's see. You, uh, oh, uh, Justin says you guys should try to do more in-person interviews like Keith did with DJ Lagway. Great That's insight awesome. from a recruit's point of view. Uh, thank you, Justin. I, I got ripped by that one too, be, or for that one too, because I apparently I cut him off too much. Or, it's, good, it's good with commits, though. Like Keith, I thought that was so good with Keith because it's commits. And I'll say the reason why we don't do it as much with, with targets is because you'll see some kids freeze up a little bit on camera. They might want might not want to say certain things on camera, you know, as far as their recruitment. But when it comes to commitments, it's super beneficial, like what Keith did, for sure. We'll do more I, of those. Yeah, and and just so you know, I did have to cut them off. I cut everybody off, but I had thir a 30-minute window. Man, I was just trying to get as many questions as possible. There's no easy way to do these things, man. You got people walking in the room, you know, noise outside, noise. I mean, you know, and I, I don't exactly have the best poise out there. So Isaiah Williams uh, was a good one, too, though. That was a good one, too. Yeah, yeah good kid. By the way. A guy nobody's really talking about. I wasn't bad mouth in the receiver class. I'm just saying it's a good receiver class, but maybe where's that elite guy? Well, yeah. some people say Isaiah Williams is really raising his level of play this season at Carrollwood Day School yeah. in Tampa. So, all right, Harrison, we'll get to a couple more here. Harrison says Florida's going to finish with some big fish. They're open, so yeah. All right, Nathaniel says, who's going to be the next Wilbur Marshall or my big cousin, Alonzo Johnson? Alonzo Johnson, by the way, I, I want to say he was a first or second round pick. All SEC defensive lineman, Florida mid '80s, played for the Eagles and was very good with the Eagles too. But Wilbur Marshall, best defensive player in Gator history, hands down, and probably will someday be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I believe so. All right, uh, let's see if I can find one more here. Let's see. I'm just just looking, guys. Just looking. Um, I think that's probably it. Uh, this uh, Nick Delatore guy. Great okay. stuff, guys. Yeah. Oh, so here we good. go. We'll finish with this. Justin says, hey, Keith, I remember DJ Lagway say UF was working behind the scenes to shock some people. Yeah, I mean, and DJ Lagway has always said, you got to be patient with the Jordan Seatons and Jeremiah Smiths. They're not just going to up and flip. You've yeah. got to play the long game. If you're going to get them, you're probably not going to find out until signing day or the night before. So he was right. But by the way, who were his big targets when I went out and saw him in Texas? He really named three of them. Jordan Seaton was number one. Uh, Jeremiah Smith was at the top of his list. And DJ Lagway, and he predicted Florida had a very good chance to land all three. Well, they're one for one so far uh, with, with LJ McCray. So anyway, for Corey Bender, I am Keith Niebuhr. This is Talking Gators Recruiting. I don't know, we change the name of it every week, but that's what the logo says up top. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe to our channel. Tell other people about it. In the future, look, we're going to do more of these. This is kind of our test run season. I mm -hmm. think next year we're going to have a lot more live shows. We're going to have a lot more special guests. We really had to build the brand first, Corey. Yeah. 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 You Takes guys, time. you, Nick, and Zach did a great job building the Gators online brand. Now we got to build the YouTube brand. And, and Nick Delatore and Zach Alberverdi have a great show. Go to our channel. They, they put it out. Um, actually, is it? Yeah, they did it live yes, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. Weekly show talking about the football team. So we're really trying to make the most of YouTube. I think we'll have 10,000 plus subscribers by this time next year. And we'll start to do more interesting things in the spring. I'll be on the road. Corey will be manning it from home and uh, a lot of the time and vice versa. And we'll be doing live interviews. We'll be at spring practices. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe, subscribe button. Thanks for all your comments. Uh, $1, get your foot in the door at GatorsOnline.com right now. $1, one month, great community, great insight, great intel. Uh, it's Military Appreciation Week, Corey, and I'd be remiss if I didn't salute all the veterans out there, and you are one of them. So thank for you sure. for your service. We appreciate that. Okay. It's the Jersey Blackout Weekend in Gainesville. Also, Corey, 50 years ago today, neither one of us were alive, 
Actually, that's not true. My God, I was alive. But 50 years ago today, 50 years ago today, Don Gaffney became the first black player to start at quarterback for the Florida Gators. So salute awesome. also to Don Gaffney. He's going to be at the game this weekend. He's excited about those Gators as he, he has been for five decades, the pride of Jacksonville reigns. By the way, Corey, in his first start, Florida beat Auburn 12 to 8 at what was then known as Cliff Hare Stadium. Oh wow, yeah. And they had never won there before. Okay, yeah. So, the day you Good start stuff. your first black quarterback, you go out and you win at Auburn's Cliff Hare Stadium for the first time ever. Good stuff. And Florida awesome. went on to win every game that November. It's still known as the November to remember. Hey, guys, thank you very much. That was a long outro. Corey, take care. Have a safe weekend everybody. Enjoy the game and take care. See you guys.